This is a production of Cornell University. But I need some place for it to dry. Now, the ideal thing is to have a, a window, a sunny window, because it will, or door, because it will dry much better that way. But not everybody has a place where they can leave it for 12 hours or so. So, a styrofoam tray works just fine. Um, a, a piece of um, a, a tray or a flat surface, an old cookie sheet. Um, make sure if it's a cookie sheet that you're not going to use it again for food, please. Um, and you're just going to turn it upside down like this. And you're going to press it onto the sheet, get as much water out of it as you can, and then very carefully lift the piece off. Now it can sit in the sun and dry just like that, or if you're working in a a school group you can um, you can take it home later right on the tray but as you can see right now the fibers are pretty well bonded together at this point I could actually move this um, I'm going to wait until it's almost completely dry before I actually take it off of the sheet and then I've got paper and there are a couple of other fun things that you can do with this um, you can add things to it. First thing that uh, most people do is they add a little color to their slurry. And you can actually mix colors. Um, you know, you can take the primary colors to start with and uh, make the secondary colors. I happen to have a, a piece of uh, um, green paper left. I'm going to take this with the uh, business reply mail and put that right in there. Now this paper has a lot of different uses. Um, when we were making it at school, we used to use it for holiday greeting cards, um, for Mother's or Father's Day, um, a handmade card. It's kind of a cool thing to, um, to be able to give a parent. And I've done this with children as young as two and a half. Um, there, are some, there are some methods of doing this that involve ironing the paper between two sheets of paper or paper towels. That actually wastes more energy than what you're saving by recycling the paper. So please don't do that. Um, this is going to dry perfectly naturally in the sun. Just kind of mix that in. The more water you have in the mix, the thinner your paper will be. Um, the, obviously, the, if you have it really thick, like soupy oatmeal, um, and you're going to get construction weight paper. It just depends on what you'd like to do with it. So for this one, I have a very special piece of screen. I took, in a, uh, took um, some yarn and very simply put a heart in. This is a watermark. Um, paper makers, professional paper makers, uh, used to identify their paper with this watermark and it's a thin spot in the paper that you can actually um, see through. It's translucent when the paper is finished. So I'm, I want to put a watermark in this. It could be my initials, it could be a special symbol for me. Is I'm going to put some lavender in because lavender smells really great. And you can write on it. And then these are lavender seeds. So somebody could take this piece of paper after I've sent it to them, um, put it in their garden, and then they might have a lavender plant um, next spring. So again, I'm doing this. Now at this point, before I pick it up, I'm going to put the lavender seeds just in the frame here because I don't want it in all of my paper. I'll just kind of move them around and lift it up. 
And I've got this nice batch of uh, lavender seed mixed in with the paper. Again, I'm going to take my second uh, screen piece. I'm going to squeeze as much water as I can. Okay, I'm going to lift this off. And you can see that's pretty well embedded in there. Now, this one I'm going to put on the window. Where the yarn was. 